Hello and welcome along to another EFL Manager Special from the Honest Football Podcast. We are back just a few days after Valerian Ishmael decides to leave Barnsley for fellow Championship Club West Bromwich Albion. He signed a four-year deal there. And then, just before we came to record this today, there have been some bizarre statements and goings on at West Brom. So we'll talk a little bit about that. But Craig, we've got to start with what is a newly relegated club to the championship. So there's not so much we can talk about the old guard. Obviously, they had the situation with Slaven Bilic early last season, bizarrely sacked after a brilliant draw away at Manchester City. Sam Allardyce couldn't save them. There was probably a little bit too much to be done and there wasn't enough backing in January. But we've now got to the situation where Barnsley have lost a brilliant manager and West Brom have gained an excellent head coach. What are your initial reactions? It's, it seems to be the same old thing for Barnsley, where the new manager gets a good bounce, does the job that he needs to do, and then he, has, and then he goes. Which is a shame for Barnsley, because they, they were absolutely brilliant last season, defied all expectations. Um, it's the same again for Barnsley. You have to start again from the bottom and uh, hopefully they hire someone worthy to be up there. Well, I wouldn't say be in the playoffs again, because I think I'm not being disrespectful for Barnsley. I might just be the one-off, but at least a top half finish for them. But it's, it is a good appointment for West Brom. I hope it's not just uh, he had a good six months, six months at Barnsley, and then that's all the hype in. Hopefully he can continue his good form. Yeah, and I mean, I guess the one thing we don't really know from last season is in his role at Barnsley, is how actively was he involved in transfers? Because, of course, they brought in some brilliant players in January. I mean, the, the loan of Daryl DK was pretty much a masterstroke by championship standards. But here he's going to West Brom as a head coach. Now, there's a risk of it being a four-year deal because West Brom haven't been particularly patient in recent years. But what are your initial thoughts on him joining West Brom? Do you think it's a, a good move for him? We're talking about Ishmael himself here. Do you think it's the right move for him? And do you think it's the right move for West Brom? Strange one. I have to be honest. It's a strange one. I, I, I wouldn't have picked him, in my opinion, and that's not a disrespect to to him because, uh, as I said, I just praise him right now for his job at Barnsley. But I, I'm sure they had other candidates at first. Maybe I, I think it's the same thing for most clubs that we've, well, especially the higher up clubs that, especially from the Premier League, they're struggling to bring in new managers or head coaches. It's, it's it is a strange one. I, I do think it's an, it's a good appointment. I do think it's a good appointment. Whether it's first, second, third choice, it doesn't really matter. But I hope they have a clear path of what he wants because he pretty much had Barnsley on a shoestring budget and now he's probably got a, a few million quid, especially with uh, parachute payments from the Premier League. And I hope that he can work his way, but he did have a small squad. He's got a big squad to deal with. So let's see who he brings in because at the moment they haven't really brought anyone in because they hadn't had a, a manager, head coach to pick these certain players that he wants. So uh, we'll have to see how it goes, really. Yeah, and it's a bit of a change of strategy for West Brom because even though Sam Allardyce officially head coach tighter, he was always going to be involved in transfers where Ishmael may not be so much, particularly making a step up in terms of management level, I guess. But the, the thing we have to talk about, and you've led on to it beautifully there, and we didn't get to do it with Sheffield United so much because they've come down and they had a naturally smaller squad. They had a championship style squad. West Brom have got a lot of players on the books I mean, we'll get to the statements day in a minute about one of their key players, but they've got a lot of players on the books. It's a bigger squad to manage. It's a very different situation. How do you think that Ishmael's going to cope with that? Do you think it's something he'll thrive in? Or are we going to see West Brom trim the squad quite significantly? To be honest, West Brom haven't splashed the cash, surprisingly. And that's why they they were relegated from the Premier League, because they didn't splash the cash. And it was similar to the situation with Norwich. They didn't splash the cash uh, when they got promoted a couple of seasons ago. And then they, they were dreadful but now they're back in it so hopefully they might have learned a lesson from it West Brom have been up and down he doesn't really need to recruit as much because there's enough players with championship experience so he might want to add a few players some players will have, probably go might that go up to the Premier League maybe Pereira I, I, to be honest I don't see many West Brom players moving on to the Premier League in my opinion I don't think they, they were good enough to stay in the Premier League so and plus they had a couple of players online that they've gone back to the uh, parent club so uh, I, I think they need to add a couple of players in certain positions but it depends on obviously who stays as well yeah I mean we'll we'll get on in a moment to the what West Brom need to do because there is a very clear gaping problem in their team but the the weird statement we've got to mention that's come out today today Craig about uh the reported in the times about 
Uh, Matias Pereira, a man you just talked about, one of their star players, being offered out to a Chinese club for a potential bunk. We've seen a technical director leave in the last couple of weeks. There is a lot of potential unrest off the pitch. And we've said it in about 50 of these manager specials over the last 18 months. If there are problems off the pitch, they almost always translate on it. And is that a worry for West Brom into the new season? Yeah, no, no one wants to have any off-field troubles. We've seen that with Derby and Sheffield Wednesday. Off-field troubles can resort to on-field troubles and and they they finish as low as they possibly can be. And if this is true, I, I think the FA will go really hard on them, to be honest. Um, but we've got not much need for that, haven't we, as Luton fans? As Luton fans, we, we you know, we get the old 30-point deduction where it doesn't seem to happen with 30-point deductions by other clubs for, like, mishandling finances. And uh, this this is quite serious, especially third-party payments and that sort of stuff. And we've seen that with uh, West Ham, with Tevez and Mascarano from yesteryear. And it, 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 does, it just doesn't work. So I would be worried if I was a baggie, to be honest, uh, if this is true. I know money is everything at the moment, especially after a pandemic. But hopefully he stays at West Brom, or if he does move up back into the Premier League, he's good. He's a very good player. I think yeah. he's too good for the Championship, in my opinion. So as I said earlier, it would be key if he actually stays. Completely agree. And before we get on to how we think Valerian Ishmael is going to do at West Brom, I mean the, the thing that has to be addressed for West Brom is definitely the defence. I think it was quite evident last season that it was a possibly, without being unkind, a Championship standard defence in the Premier League, particularly the back four. The goalkeeper was pretty good but they conceded 76 goals in 38 games. That's an average of two goals a game exactly. They weren't actually bad for goal scorers. They weren't in the bottom three in the Premier League for that. But you can't concede 76 goals. What are they going to do to address it, Craig? Do we see reinforcements or is that going to be done through coaching? I think coaching. I, like they're, they're, I said, they're a good championship defence. Fur, uh, furlong at right back, a giant centre-half. I think they were too naive in my opinion, to concede. I think they went a bit more gun home and they've they made so many mistakes as well to, that led to goals as well. So that 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 has to stop. And I think with coaching, it, it will. I think they probably will be a bit more defensive to start with. The attacking line is actually is really good, to be honest. And as you said, they like, weren't in the bottom three for goal scorers. So attacking wise, they're fine. Creating chances is fine. It, as you said, it's defence. And I think... You always start from the back, didn't you? So I think that would be the key thing for West Brom. Absolutely. I mean, I guess the, the one negative I would put in is if Sam Allardyce can't teach it, can Valerian Ishmael? But we'll wait and find the answer to that. Craig, it's come to that time again. We've got to predict. I mean, I think it's only the second championship one we've done this summer. So we've not given away too much. I don't think, if I remember rightly, any of us put Sheffield United in the top two. The question is whether you're going to do the same with West Brom. How do you think Valerian Ishmael is going to get on? Do you think he will be given the time that his four-year deal would suggest? And where do you think West Brom are going to finish next season? Do I think they'll make the top two? No. Do I think he'll last the four years? No. What manager lasts a whole contract nowadays is, uh, is beyond me. Do I see him in the... I think they'll, they'll, be, I think they'll make playoffs, to be honest. I, I do think they are enough championship experience-wise to make the playoffs. I'll be surprised that they finish outside. I'm very, very surprised. I think Ishmael will do okay. I, I think he'll do okay. Playoffs, I think the expectancy is playoffs, regardless. So, I for me, it will be the playoffs uh, for West Brom. I don't see him going up either. I don't see him going up. Wow, that's pretty bold. I mean, I, I'm a little bit torn on this one because, as you say, like West Brom, whenever they're in the championship, you just assume they're going to be in the top six. It's very rare that they're not either in a relegation battle in the Premier League or the top six of the championship. My concern is, I don't know if Valerian Ishmael will be given time. There's one school of thought to say there won't be a huge turnover in the squad, which may be helpful. But are they going to be able to replace the likes of Pereira if he goes? Conor Gallagher is going to be a big miss from last season as well on loan from Chelsea. And they are still missing a the centre forward. They relied on loan players later in the season. But I still think their biggest problems defensively. I don't know if Sam Johnston will go. He's in the England squad, obviously. That's going to make him an attractive proposition. So everything on the pitch is telling me that West Brom might, if they're ever going to finish outside the top six of the championship, this might be the year. But West Brom just don't finish outside the top six. It's a very hard dilemma. And I know I'll get so many pelters if they do, if they get in the top six. But I'm going to have to predict them to miss out. I don't know if Ishmael mm. will get through the year. I don't know what's going on off the pitch. Because West Brom are a club for whatever else you say. There's never chaos off the pitch. And that's starting to come in the last year to 18 months. 
So remarkably, I'm going for West Brom to miss out on the playoffs. They'll be pushing at the door, but it'll be, in my opinion, under a new manager towards the end of the year. Despite the fact, I think Valerian Ishmael would be the right man for the job. I don't know he'll be given the time. But it doesn't matter what we think. It's the first time in a few we've disagreed, actually. So it's nice to be back to normality, if nothing else. Um, but if you do agree with us or disagree with us, let us know in the comments down below. It doesn't really matter what we think. What do you think, West Brom fans? Are you looking forward to a good season under Valerian Ishmael or are you worried about the off-the-pitch turmoil? If you want to stay up to date, subscribe down below for regular content from the podcast. Please do chuck a thumbs up on the video, which I almost forgot to say. You can follow us on Twitter at HonestFootball3. Thank you to Craig for joining me as always, live from his car. And we'll see you next time.